Hey guys, this is Travis again. Today's gonna to be a special video. Now I want you guys to know before I start, this is gonna be my opinion on things. So let's get to it. So let's say you have a mental illness, whether you're bipolar, schizophrenic, or basically have anxiety and depression. And you heard about the news. If you haven't, well, the COVID-19 has pretty much infected all of us, affected all of us. And right now, social distancing is pretty much a must if you don't want to get the coronavirus. However, when it comes to that being said, you pretty much lost all social networks when it came to dealing with your mental health. A lot of people do social settings and that is how they relieve themselves from anxiety, depression, suicide ideations, cutting, drugs. They lost that support because they don't know what to do with themselves. Well, the first thing you should do is try to set up an online Zoom call where you can interact with some of the people that actually uh, want to have the same topic as you or want to do the same topic as you have the same familiarity when it comes to getting themselves well for mental health. Other than that, I'll give you some other tips on how I've been able to survive the COVID uh, when I also have bipolar disorder or a mental illness as well. Now, first of all, I've been struggling with bipolar disorder. I was first diagnosed in 2008 and right now it's 2020, so it's been 12 years I've been struggling with bipolar disorder. As I stated earlier, I was actually affected by medication. I had a, a manic reaction to Paxil and that's what declared me as bipolar. Anyways, with that aside, let's get to it. As I said before, so it's COVID season, social interaction is pretty much cut and you're experiencing suicidations, self-harm, cutting, drinking, any type of drugs, depression, anxiety, mania, any of those symptoms you're experiencing, what can you do about it? Well, the first thing that I would do is just give you advice on how I've dealt with it. Um, when it comes to medications, I think this primarily is the most important thing. You gotta have your medications regulated. Now, the psychiatrists are open during this time and hopefully you can get one, but if you can't, you gotta find one that's actually suitable for you because if you find one that doesn't wanna even push the, the experimentation button on when it comes to you being a guinea pig, well, things are pretty much at a loss because I actually had a nurse practitioner who I was with for a year and I did not get any help or any changes with my medication because she was afraid of putting me on uh, antidepressant because I was bipolar. However, just to let you know, I actually found another psychiatrist who was willing to listen to what I have to say because like, hey, a lot of people with bipolar disorder are not only on a mood stabilizer or antipsychotic, they're also on an antidepressant. And she just refused to put me on. It was one of the most difficult situations in my life because I was very suicidal. Um, if you're experiencing suicidal ideations, make sure you get a hold of someone, especially if you can't, like during this season, I'm sure you can get a hold of someone on suicidal hotline and that's the link that I will post below or the phone number I'll post below. Anyways, let's cut to the story. So I was put on Zimbalta and it changed my life entirely. I went from living in a group home in Ertz for 90 days, uh, intensive residential treatment, that's what it's called. And before that, I even went to a three week partial hospitalization, which actually was like, uh, uh, a system that was involved when it came to treating mental health. They had mental health groups and activities and it lasted all day. And before that, I was hospitalized for two weeks for suicide ideations. And it's worth mentioning in the last two years, I've had four hospitalizations. And now it's literally been four years, five years actually, in which I only had one hospitalization. I actually two hospitalizations in five years. That's pretty good. And it's only been, and it's been two years since I've actually had the last hospitalization. So that's really good. When it comes to my opinion, now don't take this in regards to yourself because I don't know your situation. I don't know the environment you live in. I don't know what kind of medication you're on. I don't know how consistent you are when it comes to taking my meds. But I am very consistent with taking my meds and I see that 
80 to 85 percent of my life when it comes to my satisfaction happiness l lack of terms of uh of suicide ideations cutting or suicidal thoughts which is suicide ideations like i used to hang a rope have thoughts of hanging a rope and hurting myself all those thoughts of hurting myself have literally gone away pretty much um I feel this in Balta at 60 milligrams, and I used to be on 120, and I dropped down because I didn't need, no longer need it. But I even think that when I went off it, I was going back a downward spiral like to before. So, like I said, medications is key. Find the right psychiatrist. It's so important to find the right psychiatrist. I cannot stress that enough because if you find the right psychiatrist who's willing to listen to you, who's willing to experiment, or you're willing to be the guinea pig to try any medications, that is the best bet. Now, it's going to be a really hard road. It's going to be very challenging because I've literally been on 20 different medications to uh, see if it will help my mood, my mental health, my mental illness, things like that. And I finally come across the right cocktail and I feel like life is tremendously much easier. I literally, like I said before, I literally went to being on my knees, wanting to kill myself, to pretty much living a life of luxury where I'm pretty much happy in spite of this COVID season. So let's get back to the fact. If 80 to 85% of it, to me, is based on the medications and you should also think hey that's right i also have to be on the right medication so it's so important to find the right doctor it's so important to find the right psychiatrist you got to make action you got to be engaged it's the one important thing when it comes to your mental health you have to be engaged and after the desire to change yourself because if you get sick of being sick and tired of of the constant suicide ideation the cutting the drug use the anxiety depression you can overcome that if you make a decision to decide to change you have to have that want that desire to change and if with that desire you can get anywhere where you want to in life so let's with let's just say that 80 to 85 percent of it is med change and you feel pretty good things are going pretty well um let's say okay i understand this travis i can't find the right psychiatrist I don't have the right resources to do it. I can't afford it. So what can you do next? I think the number one thing is to keep yourself busy. You have to have a routine, whether it's volunteering or uh, doing type of job that might keep you busy. I know it's really, really tough. You have to do a cost analysis if you think it's beneficial to expose yourself to get the COVID or infecting others. You got to be very, very careful. And I would assume whenever you go in public, always wear a mask and wash your hands daily or ritually even um in spite of that so let's say you don't want to volunteer and you don't want to work because you don't want to be exposed to the virus so what the hell else can you do well let me just base on the facts on what i've done with my life uh i'm very passionate about music i have a passion for working out exercising and i have a passion for um art so I've done all three basically while being here isolated in my home from the COVID. Um, my daily routine is I sleep at 11 or 12 a.m., 11 p.m. or 12 a.m. to maybe 11 or 12. And it defers from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. It defers every day, but mostly that's kind of regulated. So I sleep about 12 hours. I get up. I either work on a Adobe Premiere video, which is video editing, and then I also com make, compose music for like three or four hours, and sometimes even six or eight hours if I don't decide to work on working out, basically. So that consumes like a lot of my time, and then I work out to an hour or two after that. Um, I only eat one meal a day, so I literally lost 40 pounds in the last year because of my strict dieting. The three things when it comes to you being engaged to beating this COVID situation. Number one, you have to have the desire, okay? You have to be willing to want yourself to do something. Like I said, when you get sick and tired of doing nothing or you're sick and tired of having suicidal thoughts, depression, anxiety, you might want to be able to force yourself to do something. Maybe this video caught your eye and you want to find a way to help your situation. So you have to have the desire. 
The next thing is you have to have the right diet. Now, mental diet is what I want to explain. It diet is also physically if you want to be exercise. You have to have the right mental diet, like the right mental health. You have to think positive, which is very hard to do. But if you're on the right medications, actually, really isn't that hard. Um, you have to also have the the positive outlook. Um, if you're not in the right situation, like I would say mental diet, for instance, the wrong relationship, the wrong social setting, bad habits like cutting, self-harm, alcohol, drugs, self-injurious behavior, suicide ideations. Now, I used to have a lot of suicide ideations. That's the one thing that I felt like I had to go to DBT. I had to go to dialectical behavioral therapy. I had to be at an ERTS. I had to be in a 90-day program living with someone that knew professionally what to do when I'm dealing with something like this. I went from that to being living on my own, doing things independently, getting out in the world when I have to, and staying mentally healthy and pretty much happy throughout the last year or two. I've done exceptionally well. So if you want to repeat this, you have to realize it's first desire, the right diet, which is the mental diet, like thinking positive, the right situation, put yourself in the right situation, the right environment. Now, you don't want to expose yourself to like a, a vulnerable, you're a vulnerable adult or a vulnerable child. You have to realize that your mental illness is going to impact others. And if they have a mental illness, it's going to impact you. So you have to learn to respond instead of react. You got to respond to a situation. If, if you react, like react is a bad word to me because it feels like reacting versus responding is much more difficult and challenging to live with because it involves emotions and not logic. So you have to avoid stressful people. You have to avoid people that put you down. You have to avoid people that are literally hurting yourself when it comes to your mental health. Now I was recently exposed to someone with borderline personality. It was the number one thing that killed me in terms of my mood recently. And I actually had to get a med change because I just couldn't deal with this person. It would always set me off. Uh, she would get set up, I would get set off, she's both mentally, I'm mentally ill, I'm bipolar, she's borderline, and it just would not stop until she just pretty much, these people have to be cut from your life. So you have to have the right mental diet, you have to be in the right social situation, you got to put yourself in the right situation, and you got to be willing to put yourself in the right social situation. So there's desire, diet, and the last thing is discipline or determination. You have to have the right determination and the discipline to actually achieve the goals you want to do. If you have a want and you really, really want to achieve it, you'll do anything it takes to achieve that goal. Now, bad habits. You can develop good habits if you keep it long enough. So I used to not want to work out to work out an hour or two every day for five days a week for an hour or two a day. That's happened the last overextending a year. And I've literally lost 40 pounds, and I'll get into it later, but this is a video on the COVID season, how you can defeat it. So, as I stated earlier, it's desire, second is diet, and third is determination and discipline. The discipline is so important because it makes you have a routine. Having a routine is so much more important. So people who work all the time have the discipline because it keeps them busy let's say busy, you have these social engagement you can no longer do or work you can no longer do. You have to have some type of thing, and i always gone to creative things like art and music. I've always had that a part of me and I use that to leverage myself to get out of these states in which I literally do nothing. Um, so literally I wake up at 11, 12, I, 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 I do music for three or four hours and then I might do video editing another hour or two, and then I work out for two to hour or two. I eat, that takes, I, I take a shower first, that takes an hour or a half hour, and then I eat, which takes an hour, which prepares food. And like diet's very important if you want to be mentally, mentally healthy too. Um, so you have to have the right knowledge when it comes to doing this. Um, I think it's also important to know that after this, there's downtime. You're going to have downtime. You want to find something to do. You have to have some type of an activity, whether it's reading. Uh, the thing is I pace a lot, and I literally am every month in the top 3% or the top 2% 
of my age group when it comes to the steps I do every day. Now this is immense. A lot of people don't put in a in like 10,000 to 15,000 to 20,000 steps a day, but I do because I used to think I used to have this this stinking thinking in which you want to try to avoid. You got to if you have if you cut, if you have if you drink, if you do drugs or if you have suicidal thoughts, you got to challenge channel that energy into some good habits there's bad habits and good habits so i took the challenge of pacing a lot into something that i realized in the long-term goal it's healthy because i'm losing weight and because i'm losing weight i'm actually able to see that as a good term good habit so i literally walk 10,000 15,000 uh 20,000 steps a day 20,000 is rare, but I definitely do at least 10,000 steps a day. And 6,000 actually recommended by Samsung. If you have this app, Samsung Help is a, a tremendously good app for counting steps. I think that it's one of the best things I ever had in my life because I like to keep track of my steps that I do every day. And I feel that is the one thing on why I have the desire to get healthy because of this desire to pace. I. People might think, well, why would you just waste your life away pacing? Can't you do something else? Well, I find it relaxing. That's why I do it. I sometimes, I think I actually got close to doing four to three hundred thousand steps in last month, and I was in the top twelve percent of like a million people. I was like maybe seventy thousand. I was like the seventy thousand person out of um, uh, like out of. Uh, a million people that actually are on Samsung Health. So that's pretty good in the top 12% of everyone and in the top 3% of my age group. So I do that when I'm, I'm off. So I, I get up, I'm on the right medications. I get up at 11, I I work out. I mean, I don't, I, I, I only eat one meal a day because I, I'm trying to focus on reducing my weight as well and I'm still trying to reduce weight. So I, I get up, I, I work on music, for a while for three to four hours I then do a video editing for an hour or two and then I work out for an hour or two I take a shower I eat and then I either pace or do videos or do art so I have a passion I have several passions I can force you so you have to channel something that you can do every day and you got to consistently do it you have to have the determination the desire and the right mental diet to be able to do what you want to do to achieve what you want to achieve you have to every day I wake up I always know that I have something to do and that is make music that's all I ever do pretty much for the most of the day that I'm up and because of that, I've developed the habit of keep doing it. And it's a good habit for me because it's creative. I'm not hurting myself. I'm not having suicidal thoughts. I'm not engaged in bad social situations. I'm not drinking. I'm not self-harming myself like cutting. All these things is a good thing. You got to have a cost analysis in the thing you do. So, for instance, if you're having suicidal thoughts, is that really good to have? No. You want to be able to get, curb those thoughts so you're not thinking about it all the time. And I literally do not literally think, I, I literally don't think of having suicidal thoughts every day because I feel like I'm at my most healthiest and primarily it was because when I was in social situations before, they would actually become drama heavy and it would disrupt my mood. But every day it's been so consistent from Monday to Sunday that I'm actually doing pretty well when it comes to emotions. Now you have to be very careful about introducing yourself to new social situations and even that having old situ social situation can be deadly for you because if you react instead of respond it's going to make you emotionally attached and it's going to be a burden to you. So unlike people like social situations you can control the creative output that you do whether it's you work on a piece of paper you read all your performance yourself your own performance that you do is all based on you and only you has control of that responsibility if it was social situation you don't have that control so that's the reason why i feel social situations are a little bit hard to do you got to somehow be uh set boundaries if you do determine that so to end this video what can you do to 
help alleviate yourself from the suicidal thoughts, the bad habits, the um, the the self injurious behavior. What can you do to curb those? Well, COVID season is very difficult, but I found several ways to get over it, and you have to have the right passions, the uh, the right willpower. Like you have to have the desire. Okay. So you gotta have that biggest want. You have to have the biggest why and why you want to do it, and then you have to have the right diet, which is mentally speaking. You gotta be think positive. You gotta have a willpower to want to do what you want to do, and you gotta stay engaged. It's so important. And the last one is determination and discipline. You have to continuously do it every day, and hopefully after a while, things will get consistent and it will be a good thing. Now. Bad habits are hard to cut. I know that because when I was suicidal, I would always be suicidal and I hated it because I just felt terrible. I didn't want to live anymore. And I literally was doing that every single fucking day. And once I got on the right medications, it was like that magic. I was a totally different person. I I feel that the medications is still 80 to 85% of life changer for you. If you're not on the right meds, it's the one thing that you should focus on right now is find the right psychiatrist, be patient, and be on the right job. So, but you have to have the right determination, the right real power, the right engagement to be able to do that. I feel it's so important to get yourself on the right medications. Like for instance, for physical health, a lot of it is about diet. But for mental health, a lot of it is about meds. And I feel that, yes, the environment can affect you. And yes, it's possible to be socially uh, situated in an environment in which that actually affects you versus you being mentally affected yourself. But me being bipolar and me being on the wrong meds and me not being on the right meds or missing a medication, I definitely spiraled downward. I didn't. And I felt at the time, though, I was doing DBT at the Earth with the nurse, with the psychiatrist. All this stuff, it just, it was so wasteful in the end because when I think back to it, like right now, if I was in that situation, I don't need it. Now, there's the situation, if you feel bad, like you want to hurt yourself, you want to kill yourself, you have to be realistic and say, do I want to kill myself or do I want to expose myself to the COVID virus and get help? It's so important. If I was in the situation, I know someone that I literally had a fight with because she would not go to the hospital. And even when she did, it was the last resort because she didn't have the money. But I'll do another video on how to get on MA and how to get affordable health care when it comes to someone who has a disability or someone who has SSI or SSDI, Social Security or Supplemental Income. I can do another video on how to get yourself into a program in which a lot of it, like 100% of my coverage was through Medicare and medical assistance. I'm on Medicare and medical assistance, and that was 100% covered my drugs, hospitalization, and the psychiatrist that I go to. But you have to have the right stuff if you want to get to where you want to go when it comes to financial well-being. So, just to end this shortly, what are the three things that you can do for yourself when it comes to living with the COVID season, how to be mentally healthy during it? Number one, you have to have the right desire Number two, you have to have the right diet, the right mental diet. And number three, you have to uh, have the right determination and discipline. So I'll just end this video. I hope you learned something. I've been really passionate about making these videos now because I just feel like pacing too much is, can be really boring. And yes, there's going to be days in which you're really bored. but. If you find something to do, you'll keep your mind busy. And I always follow my passions. I've always relied on it, but now I rely on it so heavily that I actually enjoy what I do. And I'm not exposed to vulner. I don't expose my vulnerable behavior because I'm not really involved in social uh, activities anymore, which had sparked a lot of drama in the past and would affect my mood very, very, very much. And because of that, I feel like I don't want to shortchange you or me, but I feel that because of that, I've actually been able to be very productive and perform very well during the COVID season. Now, for you, on the other hand, if you feel this doesn't work, that you still feel like, hey, I still feel sick, I, I still have suicidal thoughts, 
get a hold of someone that can help you out. If it's me, that's fine. You can comment below or message me. Uh, I don't have Facebook any longer, but you can contact my brother and you can somehow reach you through email later if it's something you want to do. Um, like I said before, though, if you're experiencing pseudothidal thoughts, the number one thing you should do is not, hey, I want to kill myself or, hey, I want to self-harm. The number one thing you should enter that hospital as soon as you can. In spite of you not being able to financially support it, you can do back pay. And it's very expensive, but at the same time, your life is more expensive. You end up hurting yourself. Imagine this. I feel like suicide in general is actually... A way to murder yourself it's like homicide of yourself but at the same time you have no responsibility after it. what happens if you become me and you realize hey I want to do something with my life but you end it there you cut things off you kill yourself nothing's gonna change you're gonna end up hurting yourself more in the end because you realize hey things could have been better for me hey if I if I just stuck this through one more day one more minute one more hour one more second, things would have been just better for me. And at that time, you have to have that same mindset. You have the desire to want to live. And in spite of things being uh, absolute hell, you have to have that desire to want to live. And if you have that desire, you want to get help, you want to get assistance, you want to go to the hospital, you want to speak to a representative or a volunteer that is in mental health or the suicide hotline, that's fine. You have to realize that taking care of your mental health is your mental wealth. Wealth in general is just a physical byproduct of what you need to do to survive. But to actually, to be healthy, you have to be mentally well. If you're not healthy physically and mentally, you're not gonna see that money and then it's gonna be buried with you and you won't see it when you go to heaven or hell or wherever you wanna go to or some type of enlightenment or whatever you wanna describe it as. But at the same time, you have to realize this, that Suicide is not the answer. It's never the answer because it'll affect family, people, you know. Uh, at the same time, you have to realize this too. You're not responsible over someone that kills himself. Now me, my brother, my twin brother has been so responsible. He felt so responsible by hurting myself. But at the same time, you cannot be responsible for anyone else when they're suicidal during the COVID season. You have to realize this, that they're their own being. They have the, the will, if they have the willpower, you can direct them, you can guide them, but you cannot overburden them and say, hey, this is what you have to do or else you're going to die. It's not, it doesn't work well. You got to somehow reciprocate a positive message and you can't just inflict damage by controlling them on what they should do with their life. They have to have some type of self-control and they have to realize that they're no longer in control and they want to get help, that they want to get see themselves getting better, that they want to do something with their life, that they feel life is worth living. So because of that, I hope you get the message. Like I said before, desire, diet, determination, or discipline, three things you need to focus on. And I gave you some options on what I do during the day to keep myself busy. Now the question is, what can you do? If you can't figure it out, write something down, and just try to follow it every day. If you can't do that, well, just be like me. And, and for a while, you end up doing something, like something healthy. I want you to try to focus on something healthy. Don't go to a bad habit. You got to try to focus. Well, pacing in general, all I'm doing is just burning the carpets. I'm not hurting myself. I'm not really engaging in suicidal thoughts. But if you're engaging in suicidal thoughts and you're pacing, you have to realize this, that the suicidal thoughts... Are infringing on upon the things I really want to get done they're infringing upon my well-being I want to hurt myself I want to harm myself you have to realize this then you have to realize that okay the pacing's not working but maybe the hospitalization is what I need it's so important to realize that hey now is the time to go to the hospital I can't be ashamed of it I have a mental illness I have to take care of myself you have to realize this because this person I know is so stubborn that she wouldn't go to the hospital and finally she ended up doing it but at the same time, she wanted to get out of the hospital because she felt things were good or the doctors say things were good. You have to take proactive steps to challenge yourself, to deal with your mental health, to stay healthy physically, mentally, and spiritually. You cannot simply just uh, have other people do things where you're going to expect to get results because in the end, they're going to get sick and tired of being sick and tired of doing your shit. So own up to your shit. Be responsible, follow the three things that I told you, 
if you can't, write things down that you can do throughout the day. And if you can't do that, well, just sleep the rest of the day. It's something I've done. Uh, I sometimes go to bed early because I have nothing to do. I pace myself to death. And I do. I listen to myself. I'm very non-judgmental when it comes... I take a non-judgmental stance, which is a non-judgmental stance, which is in DBT, dialog behavioral therapy, when it comes to yourself. You have to observe. And you have to describe exactly what you're feeling. But at the same time, when you do that, you have to realize this, that uh, I'm experiencing this, but I don't want to do self-harm. You have to real, you have to find some importance to realize self-harm, suicidal thoughts are wrong. It, you don't want them, and you want to figure out whatever you can do to uh, challenge yourself to get over it. Now, at the same time, DBT focuses on you're gonna have these thoughts, just live with it. But me on the other, I don't want to live with these thoughts anymore. And I felt like I had to do something about it because I'm sick and tired of being in the hospital. I'm sick and tired of being a nurse. I'm sick and tired of being baby the rest of my life. I don't want to live in a group home with someone. I want to be able to live on my own. Yes, I live with my dad, but at the same time, I know my own shit. I don't expect other people to do shit for me. You have to have that realization that you're going to do your own shit. You're going to take responsibility of your own shit. And you're going to be able to get things done. Take care. Bye.